for taking a listen to what we do at CloudReach and how we migrate customers into the, the Google platform. Um, so I'm going to turn my Bob, camera on. So you, yeah. One of the things is you do that, I can see that you, to quote an often used term, you eat your own dog food, as I see docs.google.com slash presentation in the browser URL. You not only deploy this for clients, you live and breathe it yourself. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's absolutely true. And one of the things, uh, I, so CloudReach was actually founded by, by two uh, ex-Googlers um, who started the company. They saw the opportunity with cloud and, and you know, we were one of the first Google partners in, the, uh, in Europe. Um, so yeah, we've been uh, uh, aligned with Google from the beginning and continue to this day and look, in, in look to grow that partnership uh, with our customers over you know, the next, next iteration of our, of our company and our customers' growth. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it is something that we've always done being at, you know, we've been cloud native from the beginning. So let me, um, I'd like to start off quickly by just, uh, a quote here that I really like that also is very, I think, uh, uh, is, is very appropriate for sort of the times that we live in. Right. And so this is by Peter Drucker, a famous, uh, um, business professor. And so he said the greatest danger in times of turbulence is not the turbulence, is to act with yesterday's logic. And I, I mean, I, I think that's so true. The, the, another way to put this is the way you've always done business is the way you are going to go out of business, right? So you need not to just react to what's happening in the market, but you need to also react in a different way so that you can advance and move your business forward. And that's what cloud allows you to do. And that's how we help our customers generate more value from the cloud. And I'll talk uh, about a couple of case studies and examples of how we've done this with specific customers. Um, I'm going to focus mainly on migrations, but also give you some other um, information about some other customers that I think are pretty interesting. Um, and so we'll, we'll get into those in a little further on in the conversation. Uh, but first, yeah, just a little bit more. I already talked a little bit about Cloud Reach's uh, partnership with Google. And so it's been... Um, a, a long-standing partnership that we've had, um, and one in which we uh, we you know find a lot of value in and helping our customers get to the Google Cloud. Um, we have been named Google's Security Partner of the Year for the last three years. That includes uh, this just past year, and uh, you know I'll go over a case study that can outline some of the work that we've done um, to to you know that that allowed us to get that kind of award and that kind of recognition. Um, and so we've done multiple migrations with lots of customers. We have lots of certifications um, with Google. Uh, we are a, a global cloud service provider. And so we have offices in Europe and the US helping our, our enterprise size customers get to the cloud and then generate more value from it. You know, here are some of the services that we can provide our customers. We, we often start with advisory services, helping customers understand what they need to do to get their organization prepared, to really to maximize the value of the cloud as they begin to migrate into it, as they begin to update and develop on the cloud platform, how they can you know, deploy new applications and generate new insights for their business from data. Um, that they're bringing into the cloud environment. We also, I'd like to uh, point out here at the bottom, so CloudReach owns and, and develops Cloudomize. Cloudomize is a is an analytics tool that helps customers understand what their on-prem cloud on-prem environment looks like and what it makes recommendations for what it should look like in the cloud. So we take into account right sizing, we take into account performance enhancements that we can make so that we can do that all very quickly um, and provide the customer with a clear picture of what their TCO is gonna look like when they get to the cloud. And so, you know, we find that most of our customers are ready for change. We find that most customers are really ripe for this kind of, um, optimization of their environment and ready to move to the cloud. The data here kind of backs that up where, you know, most customers are ready to move to the cloud, but also at the same time, most customers have not yet 
moved all their workloads to the cloud, right? So there's a lot of opportunity here for, for our customers to start to make this transition to cloud and really generate change for their business and provide new services for their customers. One such customer is Aspen Dental. So here's a great example where they came to us with some significant challenges that they had. Uh, and then, you know, we worked with them to develop a holistic plan to get them to the cloud and then leverage, you know, more of the cloud services um, once they got there. So, the, um, for example, they, they really wanted to improve their self-sufficiency and be able to allow their developers to not only deploy cloud, uh, not only deploy applications, but deploy the infrastructure that those applications runs on, really generate a real DevOps style environment for their, for their customers. And so we worked with them to create a, an operational um, and organizational plan to help foster that kind of collaboration. They wanted to improve their resiliency and flexibility and agility in the cloud. So we built a cloud center of excellence that helped them develop that. And then they you know, wanted to be able to adopt new cloud services. So this is another place that we put together a plan for them in their, oper their operations and applications team so that they can start to uh, test out these new cloud services and in incorporate them into their application development. And, and so the way in which we engaged with Aspen Dental um, allowed us to really think about not just their technology roadmap, but their entire organization roadmap. And over that, the last few years of us working with them, they've recognized significant savings in the way in which they spend their IT, their IT budget, um, over $1.6 million. And they've also become more agile and more um, and more innovative in the way in that which they support their customers. Uh, here was the operational plan in which we engaged with Aspen Dental, right? So they they came to us with these problems. Some of the some of them I outlined on the previous slide, and they you know so we spent a lot of time talking to them about their organizational objectives, their technology objectives, and their business objectives. When we talk to customers, it's not just a technology problem that we're really trying to solve. It's, in a, a, it's all three of these problems that we're trying to make sure that we address and, and work with customers so that we're able to provide a complete holistic solution. And generally, that's the, the best way that we've found to ensure success when a customer migrates to the cloud. If you're only thinking on one or two of these parameters, you're missing out on either some of the value you could attain by migrating to the cloud, or you'll, you, you won't be as successful as you are hoping to be once you get to the cloud. And so we built a, uh, a cloud readiness. We did a cloud readiness assessment with the customer looking at their existing cloud operating model, what skills they needed to get, uh, what skills were they missing, what processes did they have, what processes did they need to change as they migrated to the cloud. They had a lot of concerns about governance. And you know, one of the things about moving to the cloud, it gives your developers so much freedom to try out new services or stand up new applications. But the challenge is really controlling that, making sure that they don't go too far, making sure that they don't do anything that's outside the bounds um, in which you want to you want them to work. And so building out governance roadmaps to prevent shadow IT is really important. It was something that we worked a lot with with this particular customer. And then finally, they wanted this landing zone design that was a really strong foundation for their current um, their current set of applications, but also future sets of applications and future services they wanted to incorporate into their environment. And so what we did is we took all that information going through these workshops with the customer and built out a really clear roadmap for you know, the operational governance and landing zone design. And that's what fed their cloud foundation. And we built this out for them, that landing zone that allowed for that kind of scalability and flexibility. Um, we created a, a pipeline so that they could build this infrastructure through code and not uh, and allow the developers the, the access and the ability to develop develop in um, the infrastructure code necessary to support their applications. 
and we built in automated compliance, right? So we, we set up logging for everything so that the customer was able to, you know, really track what was going on and understand um, in, in building the kind of governance and uh, oversight that they were looking for. And this is what created the infrastructure foundations to allow for their application teams to really work faster and with uh, more agility and more innovation in be beginning to allow them to work in this cloud native DevOps style of work that really fostered innovation at the company. Uh, you know, here's another uh, idea of how this, this enablement worked, but really we, we worked with them to create new processes, to get their team educated, to create that cloud center of excellence that really owns the operating and governance model framework so that there is a governing body that makes those decisions and decides, you know, who can do what in the cloud or what teams um, have access to in the cloud to really put in some controls there. Uh, in that is what sets the standard for the cloud platform teams and how that enablement in, in onboarding of the, the factory, how that allowed that company, Aspen Dental, to offer the core services and make sure that those policies were enforced. And then finally, those application teams were then able to use that, that cloud foundation to build out those, those applications. And so, you know, in addition to those pieces, we made sure that we had cost controls built in so that they were not spending more than they anticipated. We put in patterns and process to allow for automation throughout the process so that they can ensure that they become more optimized over time and more efficient over time. And also that they use known good patterns so that if they are deploying new um, infrastructure, they can start from a, a pattern that they know works and know is secure. So this is really how we built out from a, for a customer a complete cloud enablement program so that they could take advantage of the cloud at, in, at all levels of their business and begin to really leverage all the call, cloud services available and be able to do that um, effectively throughout the organization. Another organization that we worked with is Trace One, uh, and so this is they had similar problems and you know looking for challenges. So Trace One, probably not a business that most people have heard of, but they help businesses that create um, uh, that help stores or retailers create private label. Um, clothing lines and so they help them organize do the design work They help them you know set up with the the vendors and the um, the manufacturers to create the those clothing lines for those those retailers and they work with most of the large retailers throughout the world and they really were struggling because they had physical on-premise data centers and they weren't really able to keep up with the demand from customers uh, system reliability was not where they wanted to be and they were looking for a lot more control in their environment and they wanted to automate and optimize the way in which they manage their infrastructure and they did not want to invest more money in hardware um, they felt like that was not where they were able to generate the most value for the, their internal stakeholders or their customers and so, you know, we built together, we put together a, um, an entire plan for them, similar to what we did for um, Aspen Dental, where we allowed them to be more scalable, more cost effective, improve their system reliability through the, the Google uh, Cloud Platform. Um, we created new processes that helped them reboot their environment faster so that they could get uh, their systems back up and running if there was ever an outage um, faster and that was a big problem from them originally and then you know the other big piece of this was the customer had um, poor compliance and security standards in place and so we were able to work with them to really um, improve those security and compliance standards so that they can eat more easily meet the different regulatory requirements that their customers um, were asking for. And throughout all this, they not only improved the performance and the reliability, but they also improved the cost effectiveness of their overall IT spend by up to 
So this is something that their CTO was, you know, really happy about in the way in which, you know, it worked out for them. They went through this process to update their U.S. data centers, and now they're going through the same process for the European data centers. Uh, so those are two case studies where you know we really took a look at the customer's overall business challenges, not just their IT challenges, but their business challenges, and then begin to think about how we can use cloud, cloud technology to answer some of the challenges that they have um, in migrating them to the cloud. I also have two other case studies that I think are really interesting and particularly topical um, for um, for us today. So the next one is, uh, this one's a little bit under NDA, so I'm going to try and be careful about, uh, you know, how I talk about it so that I don't get into trouble with uh, our lawyers. But um, basically, one of the largest cities around the world is, was launching a cyber command, defend uh, the city in all the systems that are running throughout the entire city. Uh, and so what we built for them was a, a security and event information management system that allowed them to kind of stream in events that happened across those 40,000 devices and nodes that they had throughout the city and trying to understand like what attacks, um, information technology attacks were they under so that they can then make real-time decisions about how to respond to those attacks. And one of the other really kind of cool things about this project is we built an environment that completely replicated their existing production environment so that they could build up this um, through code. They could build up a replica environment and then simulate attacks on it so that they can see how these, at these attacks would affect different parts of their, their information systems and how they can then improve those information systems. And so they could do game day like uh, analysis and see you know, if the latest um, zero day attack, how would that affect their environment so that they can make changes to it. And so this was um, a, a, a huge advantage to the city and the, the, uh, the cyber command center because now that they can, they have a lot more information to make decisions about how to respond to these attacks and they're being proactive in, in, in seeing what happens when these attacks occur and then being able to proactively update their environment, make changes to it. And so this is, you know, was a program that's been going on for a couple of years for us. It's one of the reasons why we won Security Partner of the Year the last couple of years. It's because of the work that we did here and really um, securing this uh, very large metropolitan city in the, in the US. The, Next, uh, I think really a very topical case study that I have here is again uh, under NDA, but uh, if I don't mention the, uh, the actual customer's name, I can tell you a little bit more about this. But this is a particular customer that's uh, a large retailer um, that we all, probably all know um, about in the United States. They have thousands of stores and they generate most of their revenue like most retailers. They generate a lot of their revenue through Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales. And so the, they needed their infrastructure for their, both their online e-commerce group as well as their um, store infrastructure uh, that had to be up and operational during these periods of time is absolutely critical that they have no outages whatsoever. And it's really hard to do, obviously, because you got to, it's hard to understand the, the level of activity that's going to happen on these systems during these types of events like Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And so we worked with the customer for nine months um, ahead of those November events in order to plan out and develop a support plan so that we can we would ensure that their environment stayed up and in working for their customers during these events. Um, we worked ahead of time as well as uh, during the event to make sure that uh, the customer uh, systems all remained uh, active and available for their customer. And so what ended up, you know, through 
a this collaboration with our support teams and their support teams to be able to um, ensure that that customer stayed up and there was zero downtime and a great shopping experience for the, the customer during that period of time. And so this is again, something that we'll be doing again this year and uh, you know, looking forward to the challenge that we have uh, coming up in a couple of days. And so those are just some examples of how we help customers get to the cloud and then utilize cloud services to improve their business for their customers. Um, you know, generally they fall into four categories of um, ways in which we help customers. And the, you know, they talk about, customers talk to us about four things. Their strategy, we help you build your cloud strategy, support it with the business case and build a roadmap to adopt the cloud. It's their infrastructure. We help them build those secure infrastructures. We help them plan their migrations and, and help them generate more value out of the cloud. How do they transform their application so that they become cloud native and become um, more innovative and allow our businesses, our customers' businesses to support their customers in new and better ways? And then finally, data and analytics is, you know, Customers are generating so much data all the time. Once they get to the cloud, it's easy to then begin to capture that data and start to generate business insights out of that data. And we help customers do that, help them understand the infrastructures that they need to build in order to capture and collect that data, but also the analytics that they need to deploy in order to start to analyze and, and generate value out of that data. If, you would like um, help with any of these or you have more questions for us, please, please feel free to reach out. Um, where We have an offer for our, um, the people on AngelBeat on you know, where we can do a, um, a cloudomized assessment for free and look at, do a lot of application dependency mapping and, and what if scenarios to understand, you know, what's the right Google Cloud uh, environment for you and how we can help um, build that based on your, your business and infrastructure needs. So you can use this QR code in order to uh, get to a, uh, a web page that will allow you to fill in some information, or uh, you can just go and uh, reach out to us via this uh, email address here. We'd be happy to get back to you.